you might notice that I am in a different setting in the house today. Uh, basically, I'm not in the studio because it is like a dark cave in there. It is pouring with rain and super miserable outside, which actually is quite apt for today's topic of discussion. Um, so I said that I would talk to you guys a little bit more about the truths of pregnancy. Um, as you may or may not already know, I am pregnant. Um, I'm actually in the second trimester now, which is a lot more glorious than the first. But today I thought as part of my trimester truth thing, I thought I'd do that I'd talk about the very first trimester. This idea came about because I am quite active on Instagram and as you all probably know if you use Instagram yourselves, it can always seem like everybody else has their life totally together and sorted out and it's this beautiful place of buttercups and rainbows and everybody's skipping around and happy and when it comes to pregnancy, it just seems like all the pictures of people that I see and all the posts that people share are of just absolutely wonderful glowing women from, you know, conception to birth and beyond. Um, there are obviously a few Instagram accounts that I've found that have been saviours um, that I have enjoyed laughing along at that also talk about the kind of um, honest side of things. But yeah, it just seems to be that what you're presented with visually is all these super perfect little round bumps when you're feeling like an absolute slug and everybody saying how wonderful and natural and beautiful and just special and amazing the whole process is. Um, and equally when you meet people out and about on the street or you speak to, um, you know, pals or family members, a lot of the time everybody just talks about how wonderful pregnancy is and how glowing they felt and how if they could go back in time and have their children again because they have adult children like me you know they would do it all over again and be pregnant all the time because they, it was just such a special time and it was so wonderful and everything was great um so that was kind of my experience and obviously I knew that pregnancy was not 100% that but I don't think as I went into it I <laughs> expected it to be quite so horrific in the first trimester as it was. So let me start by saying I am sure that I didn't have it as bad as a lot of people. I didn't have hyperemesis gravidarum, you know, I wasn't vomiting 50 times a day and having to be on a drip in hospital just to keep fluids down. It wasn't that bad, but equally it wasn't great. So to start you from the beginning. We found out I was pregnant um, two days before our wedding, which was <laughs> really exciting and also kind of hilarious because everybody jokes that I'm a human whirlwind and everything is all at once and one after the next thing and I'm always chomping at the bit to get to the next thing I'm focusing on and there I was two days before my wedding um, discovering that I was pregnant and it wasn't a massive surprise because we knew that was what we wanted and we were trying to conceive but for us we were really lucky and I know that's not the case for a lot of people and I'm very very grateful for the fact that we did get pregnant so quickly but um yeah, what it meant was that during our honeymoon, um, which we jetted off on the day after our wedding, um, for three weeks in Japan, I have never felt so ill in my whole life or been so miserable. So the first week was amazing and we were kind of lying on a beach in the tropical resort on one of the southern islands, it was amazing. And then as we flew back to the mainland about six days in, I rapidly started feeling a lot worse. So we thought in our naivety that morning sickness um, would start around eight weeks, um, as a lot of the books and literature say. And so we thought, oh, we, we'll be fine for honeymoon. Like, we'll be fine. We're just at that beginning period where you feel okay and you don't even feel pregnant and everything's great. Except I started getting really bad morning sickness at five weeks. And when people say morning sickness, in my head, I figured it was like, you wake up in the morning, you feel a bit sick, you do a sick, you feel okay, maybe feel a bit queasy. Done, rest of the day, you're fine. Um, unless you have a really extreme case, obviously. But yeah, I 
wasn't actually sick, so that's one thing. Um, and I just felt like I was going to be sick, like on the verge of vomiting, like I had to carry an airplane sick bag or have a bin near me, or like I'd wake up in the night and sit up to throw up and then nothing would happen. But that feeling of, I'm a, imminently about to be sick, don't touch me, don't talk to me, every smell, every, <laughs> every sound, um, Oh, every taste, like everything made me feel a thousand times worse and I was not prepared to that. I feel like morning sickness is an absolute lie because it lasted 24-7 um, with no cease except when I was actually eating. If I was physically stuffing my face, I was fine. And then immediately after finishing, I felt really sick again and I felt sick before I ate and... Oh, it was just awful. I basically cried um, and and laid in the hotel bed for the second two weeks of our honeymoon, um, bar some trips out to get food. Um, so poor Jack, I really feel for him. He was the most sympathetic man in the world, which is wonderful. That's why I married him. He's the best. But yeah, it was just horrific. And we were Googling flights, trying to get home early and change our flights. And it was like £1,700 just to change our flights and I was miserable, we were like counting down the days. But yeah, that sickness that started at five weeks continued for about 15 weeks. Um, and you know, the whole world's like, oh, it's fine, it goes at 12 weeks once you're in the second trimester, everything's wonderful. And that's when you'll start glowing and it'll all be great. Yeah, it didn't go until 15 and I was just like, a grey slug. I just felt horrific. All I wanted to eat was like carbs and I'm like the queen of vegetables and salad. Flipping love a healthy salad, not for any other reason other than I just love the crunches and the tastes and all the things, but it was literally the last thing in the entire world that I wanted. I just wanted like pasta and baked potatoes and toast and anything beige basically, loads of cheese. Um, the diet we were previously eating for the last two years, the largely plant-based diet we were eating went out the window. And yeah, I just want to be eating all the time. And all of the books say, during the first trimester, you only need to be eating 100 calories a day more, and you should expect to put on around one to five pounds. And I only felt well when I was eating, so I just kept eating. And I think I put on a stone and a half over the first trimester, so that was really fun. If you're in your first trimester and you're feeling super crap and you cannot move from your bed or the sofa or just even summon the will to do anything, if you're feeling like that, I mean, one, it's totally okay. Like, I feel like since I shared some of my woes over on Instagram, I had literally hundreds of messages from other women saying, don't worry, I felt like this too. Like, nobody talks about this, but I felt horrific. Like, it's nice to hear someone talking about it because it was the absolute worst and, and nobody talks about that. It, it does go. Like, as much as it feels like in that moment and when it drags past the 12 weeks and it starts super early, it will never end, it does eventually end. So that is nice. Added to that fun, I also felt like I had been hit in my boobs with a sledgehammer from literally the point I found out I was pregnant. It's indescribable. It literally feels like you've been punched. Front of your boobs, the sides of your boobs, just, just everywhere. Like it's just anything brushing against them or like touching them. I wear sports bras all the time because I can't be dealing with underwiring and clasps and all that. Just whip it over your head and it's comfortable. So I just live in those and even those were too tight for my pregnancy boobs. And it was just like hell. Everything was uncomfortable and sleeping was uncomfortable because you just like lay on it and they hurt. Or you put your coat on and you accidentally knock your own boob and it's insanely painful. And that doesn't go away for at least the entire first trimester and some of the second. So that's something to look forward to. And I can't even begin to imagine what it's going to be like when I reach the stage of giving birth and I start trying to breastfeed because thought of mastitis and any other breastfeeding related ailment makes my eyes water because that was bad enough. Another fun thing, first trimester, sorry to everyone that's a little bit squeamish, constipation. Honestly, the worst thing ever. 
can't poop at all, feel like you need to poop, can't poop. That's really fun, especially, especially when you're eating all the brown foods and just all the foods, it's really great. Um, and you can't take most over-the-counter medication. Um, so prune juice is your friend, as is a high fiber diet. Added to that, there's also the fun of flatulence, shall we call it. Pregnancy farts are a thing and it's insane all the time. Just like, a, it's like, it's like being like a hovercraft or something. You just like, just a constant stream of farting and it's hilarious. Eye-wateringly terrible to experience and poor Jack, I don't even know how he survived through it. You'll be pleased to know it's subsided a little bit now, but just, like nothing you've ever I mean I'm quite like I'm like a classic oversharer I'm happy to tell people uh, the whole internet fart stories and about constipation and stuff like that but like it did get to a point to illustrate just how bad it is that even I was embarrassed by it like we Jack and I were laying in bed one time just about to go to sleep and it was it was just yeah I think it was probably the worst it's ever been the covers were basically like billowing and Jack was laughing because it was so bad and I was laughing and then I just burst into tears I was like laughing and then I was just crying because I was like this is so embarrassing I'm so sorry like I'm so disgusting this is the worst like I just feel like a massive fat slug and I can't stop farting it's really horrible I'm so sorry he was like, oh babe, seriously, don't worry, like, it's okay, like, I understand, like, can't help it. And it's like, stuff like that where you're like, oh my god, like, this is supposed to be amazing, and I'm supposed to be glowing, and this is the miracle of life, and here I am, laying in bed, laughing and then sobbing, because I can't stop farting, and this is, this is not what I signed up for. Added to that as well is being tired all the time so tired and it's so frustrating because for someone like me when i'm like i said a human whirlwind i'm always busy with my business i'm packing orders i'm designing new things i'm social media marketing i'm filming videos i'm seeing pals i'm going to the gym i'm like constantly on the go to go from being very capable like that to just oh my gosh feeling like i well one feel sick and two just want to sleep the entire time is just infuriating and I think that was one of the things that got to me most was the frustration of it all I felt so ill and I was so tired that I just I just felt completely useless I couldn't pack my orders my mum had to come over and help me pack all my orders because I just honestly couldn't move from like a bed or a chair and I was like trying to direct her where things were to pack them and everything was just making me feel worse and it was just and like I said I couldn't hoover and I couldn't do any cleaning I couldn't I couldn't do anything it was just so infuriating because I felt like I was just laying there like a slug and so much needed to be done like the house was a mess and orders needed to be packed and at that stage in pregnancy you don't look pregnant, you just look like you've eaten quite a lot of pies. In my case, I had. You ju it just feels like you're not doing anything. Like, baby's teeny tiny, like, baby's... And you just feel like, why do I feel so crap and why can I not do anything when I just want to do everything? Because I'm not even doing anything. Like, outwardly, you're just still you and you just want to get on with your stuff. And then inwardly, your body is obviously, you know, doing magical things and growing a human and producing 50 billion hormones that are obviously making you feel sick and tired and anxious and frustrated. And I found it really, really hard to give myself a break during that time. Really hard. Like, I just felt, like I said, frustrated and annoyed the entire time, like I should be doing things. And in reality, if you're feeling as ill as I was feeling, and as I'm sure a lot of you guys felt or are feeling now or will feel, like, you just can't. Like, you, you have to just accept it. You have to just listen to your body and sleep when it needs to sleep and eat when it needs to eat and just give yourself a break because, it, yeah, it's helping no one if you're a big stressed, frustrated mess like I was. But yeah, I am here to tell you that's normal and it's okay and there are other people like me that are feeling like that too because I, aside from the frustration, felt really guilty as well because I didn't like the way I looked. I, like I said, I've been, I've been working out regularly for the past four years or so. Going to the gym and being active is just massively a part of my lifestyle and I enjoy it and I don't do it for any other reason other than to feel good about myself um, and for me. My body was changing so quickly and all these things were happening outside of my control. It felt like, still sometimes feels like, I was on a driverless train and 
it was something that I have always wanted. I've always known my entire life that I wanted to be a mum. Like, I've always wanted it. Mum always tells stories about how when I was little I used to play in the sheets hanging on the washing line with my pushchair full of babies and all my dog toys tied on leads dragging along behind it and I used to say to her, my name's Jen and I've just had my baby just now. And I was always called Jen and I always had just had my babies just now, but I, always saw myself doing that and you know I've been broody for the last 10 years probably I'm I'll be 30 in April just before baby arrives and yeah that's something I always knew I desperately wanted and Jack has always known that's something I wanted it's something that he has always wanted as well but I was much more certain about it and I was felt much more urgently that this is what I wanted to happen than, than he did because we've been together for nearly eight years and so I felt so guilty that we knew this is what we wanted I've wanted it all my life and then as soon as I had it I was feeling all these shitty feelings like I was frustrated and I wasn't liking the way I looked and the things that it was doing to me and yeah I was just I, I was beating myself up all the time about feeling the way I was feeling um because not only is there the guilt of feeling like you're growing a beautiful thing that you already love, like, you know, you love it straight away and you can't wait to meet it and you're so excited that it's in there. But at the same time, there's that resentment almost that all these changes are happening to your body and you're growing and changing um, and it's completely out of your control. Like, I had no say in it. I, it was like this train was, like, careering along and I couldn't pause it for a second to collect my thoughts. It's just, that's it, it's happening now and there is a, there is a deadline and you know, life is gonna change irrevocably at that point. And so yeah, it's ter it's terrifying and exciting and I think in that first trimester when everything is changing and you know life is changing so massively, but this little tiny fragile thing that's growing inside you is so tiny and fragile, it's just this huge wave constant wave of mixed emotions because I was terrified that I was going to lose the baby and have a miscarriage. I know so many people that have suffered um, with miscarriages and it's heartbreaking and it is just devastating. And I just, yeah, and I know that one in four pregnancies does end in miscarriage. So I just, I feel like I was so anxious all the time, you know, up until the point where I had a 12 week scan where you can kind of start telling people because at that point, generally things are looking a bit more stable and viable. But yeah, there's the like massive, massive anxiety of something's gonna go wrong or I don't know what I'm doing, is everything okay? And then you can't feel it moving. So you don't know if everything's okay you know you just know that you feel crap and yeah I felt so guilty that I was feeling crappy and resentful and frustrated when so many people that I love and that I know either you know struggle to conceive for a long time or are still trying to conceive or you know pals of mine have gone down the adoption route and things like that because they have not been able to conceive naturally and of course there are millions of other people around the world that can't conceive and desperately want a child and then here I am with babe and I'm just feeling miserable and so I beat myself up about that as well and I think having spoken to lots of people and been open about it online and on Instagram and things like that I do think that that is a natural way to feel and I do think that all of those feelings are valid. I think you're allowed to feel shitty and I don't think that that undermines anything to do with the pregnancy or means that you aren't grateful for what's growing inside of you. Certainly for me, like, there's never been a point where I've wished I wasn't pregnant. Ever, 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 ever. I know, <laughs> Jack and I both know that we want this baby very, very much and it's already very loved and it will be very loved by so many people. That was never a consideration, but just, the feeling of guilt for not feeling like I'm glowing and wonderful and positive the entire time has been quite overwhelming at times. So prepare yourself for that because it's not the best. And also like at that early stage of pregnancy when you haven't had your scan and in theory you're not supposed to really tell people, it can feel so lonely because even if you have an amazing 
support network around you. You know, I have a wonderful husband and an amazing supportive family. But, you know, during that time, it still feels like it's this massive secret. That, you know, you're feeling really crap and you have to pretend to the entire world that you're feeling great. Like, I don't know how women continue to work in an office job or any other job where they're customer facing or in, you know, an environment with colleagues when they're feeling as crap as I was feeling because I take my hats off to them. I would have found it impossible being the oversharer that I am and having a cartoon face that my shows my emotions all the time. Just impossible to hide it. But like, I'm just such a whinge bag. Like I, I don't, I, I couldn't do anything. and I don't know how people can continue to work through feeling like that. So yeah, I'm really grateful for being able to be at home and work from home and do it at my own pace. But yeah, just feeling so lonely because whilst your partner can support you as much as they possibly can and be understanding and be there for you, they can't really understand and it just feels like you're in your own bubble and you want to talk to other people that have gone through it and other people that feel the same fears that you're feeling and the same worries and anxieties and yet it's this big secret that you can't tell anyone and so yeah it, it for me it felt really really isolating especially in those first few weeks when I was in Japan with Jack because Jack's you know gonna be a new dad he hasn't experienced anything like this before he doesn't know how to help me I feel like it he felt really helpless because I felt so ill and he couldn't do anything to help. He couldn't take that away from me. He couldn't take it on himself. And he so desperately wanted to help, but couldn't. And at that point, my family didn't know I was pregnant because I didn't want to load them with loads of stuff on the wedding day. I wanted them to enjoy my wedding day. And then it'd be another exciting thing when we got back. So at that point, everyone was asking me how my honeymoon was going. And I was having to be like, yeah, I'm having a great time. It's fantastic. Oh, I was crying all the time. And yeah, I felt really, really alone. and you know, through that and the like fear and anxiety that I talked about, I had a st I had one day during the time in Japan where I suddenly didn't feel sick. I didn't feel sick and my boobs didn't feel like I'd been hit with a hammer. And I, yeah, I, and I obviously couldn't feel the baby because it was so early on and I, I panicked because I've not been through this before. And I thought, why do I suddenly not feel ill? I felt really ill. This is bad. Nothing, nothing hurts. Nothing. I don't even feel pregnant anymore did the worst thing you can possibly do when you're in the early stages of pregnancy or really through any time in pregnancy. And I Googled like loss of symptoms in the first trimester. And obviously everything that came up on Google was early signs of a miscarriage, missed, missed miscarriages where your body doesn't, you know, the, 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 the embryo doesn't continue to grow, but your body doesn't actually start the process of miscarriage often for several weeks or even, you know, the 12 week scan and you realize something's terribly wrong. And I was just reading all these articles about mis miscarriage and labeling it all of myself. So then the one day that I didn't feel ill, I spent sobbing because I, co I had convinced myself and Jack that I was having a miscarriage. And so from that point onwards, I was terrified. I felt like I'd got so excited and it ruined my honeymoon because I felt so ill anyway. And then all of it had been for nothing. And my anxious, fearful, lonely brain just went into absolute overdrive and scared the bejeebas out of Jack as well with it all. And yeah, had a miserable time of it. Um, decided I needed to book a private scan in for the day we got back from Japan just to try and confirm that everything was okay and reassure ourselves or confirm that it wasn't yeah it was just horrible it was a horrible time and you know we got back and I was I think just over eight weeks eight and a half weeks had our private scan at one of those ultrasound clinics and saw baby's heartbeat and everything was fine and by that point I was feeling really sick and horrific again anyway it was only one day where I didn't but yeah, it was horrible. The amount of stress I put myself under during that time because I started Googling things. I, I just wouldn't wish that on anyone. So please do not do that. Like, I feel like looking back now, I should have told more people early on. Certainly my mum or people, friends of mine that had had babies or had miscarriages or <laughs> could understand what I was going through. You know, I feel like I should have talked to them before the 12 week period because everything scares you into not saying anything until then but in reality that is only there to protect you really from having to have conversations that are difficult and upsetting if you do lose that pregnancy and I feel like I'm the sort of person that if we went through that I would want to talk to people about it and share that I wouldn't want it to be this big secret that I never spoke about again I'd want to talk about that baby and 
always remember that baby and you know speak to people about it so had that actually happened then yeah I would have talked to those people that I would likely have told I was pregnant anyway um, and they could have helped me through it and they could have helped me through the really difficult lonely first few weeks so that's <laughs> That's my thoughts on the first trimester. The truths of it all. Morning sickness is a lie. The farts are horrific. The constipation is the least fun. Your boobs feel like you've been hit with a sledgehammer. You're tired all the time. You're gonna feel all over the place. All you wanna eat is all the time and brown food and beige food. You're likely to be anxious and terrified a lot of the time um, and feel very out of control and overwhelmed. And I think that's just how it is. I think if you don't experience any of those things, then that's insanely amazing and wonderful. And I'm very jealous of you, but I think it's probably more normal <laughs> to feel the way I was feeling or to feel some of the things that I was feeling or even m more things and different things you know pregnancy is if I've learned anything a completely unique experience to every person every time pregnancies between the same mother can differ massively and this is my first one so it's all new but uh yeah if you're having a really crappy time right now or if you are trying to get pregnant and you don't really have any idea what the first trimester might hold, then that is a bit of insight and I'm sorry if it scared you and has terrified you and put you off trying to be pregnant ever again. I'm very, very sorry, but it does get better. And like I said, I'm in the second trimester now. I'm feeling a bit better. I don't feel by any means that I'm glowing yet, but um, I at least feel human and I can talk and not sit by a bin and get on with my work and record some videos for the first time in forever. I will update you with the second trimester truths, I guess in a couple of months time, once I swim casually into the third trimester and it all starts to become very real. But until that point I'll keep sharing other videos pregnancy related baby essentials related just generally opening that conversation as well as more plant-based videos because I know that's what a lot of you guys are here for and some other content maybe business related stuff too I hope you enjoyed listening to my woes maybe laughing at me um that's okay and yeah I will speak to you soon. Have a lovely one. If you fancy leaving a comment, I will do my very best to reply down below. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. And yeah, please do subscribe because it means the world. Uh, see you soon, guys. Bye.